Today I would like to speak about the Romantic Age, in particular the literary movement that developed in England between the second half of the 18th century and the first half of the 19th century. Uh, what was produced in this period? Mainly poetry. For sure, poetry was the genre that was flourishing the most, but uh, also prose in the form of the um, uh, novel of manners and also the historical novel. The most outstanding representative of the novel of manners at the time was undoubtedly Jane Austen, who depicted the 19th century society, in particular the increasing role um, played by the middle class, um, the uh, increasing uh, political and economical power the bourgeoisie uh, was gaining at the period, uh, and on the other hand, the aristocracy was losing uh, some of its uh, power. The dynamics and the relations between uh, social classes, the differences between social classes, the importance of money, the importance played by money in relations, the codes and the conventions of the time, and the way people spent their free time having tea, going to parties, uh, and uh, the themes that were um, uh, important to the people of the time. Aside from the novel of manners, uh, the historical novel developed in a new form. Sir Walter Scott uh, introduced a different type of historical novel which no longer focused on important kings and uh, aristocratic uh, members of society, but it dealt with ordinary men and their experiences. Um, in, 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 and these ordinary men were um, represented in a particular particular historical context. Um, for instance, in one of his most famous works, Ivano, uh, the um, protagonist of the work uh, belongs to an ethnic group but then moves to a rival group and uh, shares the lives uh, of um, the other ethnic group. When he returns to his uh, hometown, uh, he has had an insight into a different group and he is able to act as a mediator between uh, two rival um, groups. Um, so thanks to uh, Sir Walter Scott, the historic novel gained importance and gained interest uh, in the reader of the time. But let's focus now focus on the most important genre, not the most important, but let's say the most popular, the most appreciated and the most flourishing uh, genre of the time, which was poetry. As you know, um, there is a, a, a great number of uh, writers uh, who produced um, numerous poems at the time. But it's not so much about the quantity of the poems. Uh, we are obviously going to focus on the quality of the poems and on uh, the impact they had on society, the importance they had at the time. Mm, let's focus on the word romantic first though. I wouldn't like you to think that um, romantic is just uh, simply related to a love story and that these poems were all about love. The origin of the word um, romantic uh, comes from a French word, the French word romance which focused on vernacular languages deriving from Latin and the um, literary productions in that particular language. It then developed in the 18th century, the, concept, the, the, the word, the adjective, and it uh, um, uh, meant um, it uh, was used to uh, describe some picturesque uh, natural elements and landscapes. Only when Romanticism was, uh, the, the Romantic movement was fully established, did the word Romantic actually refer to the feelings that those landscapes, those natural elements could produce in um, a poet in particular. So we're not just speaking about, uh, we're not speaking about love here, but yes, we are speaking about emotions in relation to the Romantic movement. Um, as we have already said many times, the Romantic poets have been categorized into the first and second generation. The first generation with Wordsworth and Coleridge, also called uh, the, the Lake Poets, because of the fact that they were inspired by the Lake District, which is um, an astonishing and breathtaking um, 
place in England. Uh, Wordsworth uh, grew up there and he was inspired, deeply inspired by some of the places. And today, if you would like to see it, it is uh, actually a national uh, park. Um, so Wordsworth and Coleridge as concerns the first generation of romantics and uh, Blake, Shelley and Byron as concerns the second generation of romantics. But let's speak about Wordsworth and Coleridge first. What did they do? What did they write? As we know, um, they are an example of a synergy between two writers. They were friends, they uh, produced something together. So they were co-producers of a work. This is already something extraordinary, I think, in the history of uh, literary productions. They wrote the lyrical ballads together. Well, actually, each of them wrote their own poems that were actually rather different. Uh, Wordsworth uh, focused on ordinary things in order to make them more interesting and to make them uh, become extraordinary, while, on the other hand, um, Coleridge focused on extraordinary things and was fascinated by supernatural elements, by exotic places, and also his view of nature was extremely different from the view of nature that uh, Wordsworth had. Mm, the first poem of the Lyrical Ballads is one of Coleridge's poems. It's called The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Um, but the Lyrical Ballads are also uh, known because of uh, the famous preface written by uh, William Wordsworth. The ballads were published in 1798, but uh, there was a second edition which was published in 1800, which included uh, Wordsworth's preface. As we have already mentioned, the preface has been considered the manifesto of Romanticism and um, it introduces uh, the majority of the core uh, concepts, themes and ideas that the Romantic poet, uh, uh, the English Romantic poet uh, believed in at the time. Uh, the the poet uh, was uh, an ordinary man, but at the same time he was endowed with uh, an extraordinary imagination and uh, the capacity of seeing inside things, the capacity of uh, um, sharing with the reader the authentic truth inside things. Um, in the preface, uh, perhaps one of the most uh, famous uh, lines is uh, Wordsworth's uh, idea of uh, memory uh, as he uh, states that poetry comes from and is inspired from emotion recollected in tranquility. Emotion lets us obviously focus on the importance of our inner world, of our feelings. Recollection introduces the concept of memory. Emotion um, is uh, uh, turned into a poem thanks to the central and crucial role of memory, thanks to which the poet is capable of uh, reproducing a new emotion, a kindred emotion, which he can then transform into a poem and share with the reader, thus producing another emotion. Um, these are some of the core concepts introduced in Wordsworth's uh, preface uh, to the lyrical ballads. As for the other um, uh, romantic um, poets, the poets of the second generation, uh, we uh, can mention Byron, in uh, particular uh, what is uh, renowned when we are speaking about Byron is the image of the Byronic hero which we will focus on um, uh, in the future. Um, Byron uh, represents the satanic poet um, and also the, um, the, the mood of this second generation of romantic poets changes uh, as compared to the first generation. Um, as we said, they are not necessarily um, 
uh, different generations chronologically, but uh, uh, in terms of uh, atmosphere in their poems and messages and themes and uh, lyrics and production, they are very different. The, one of the main features of the second generation is the disillusionment caused by the de generation of the French Revolution. As you know, at the beginning, um, the French Revolution inspired many, many writers, including, for example, Blake, as we have seen. Mm, but uh, the um, evolutions, or if we want, we could actually call them involutions, of the revolution led to disillusionment uh, on behalf of many writers. Uh, as for the second generation of romantics, we can also mention Shelley, who was against all forms of tyranny, and then Keats, um, who uh, was one of the authors who um, most deeply managed to um, present and share the moods, the emotions uh, uh, typical of uh, the um, introspection uh, that a romantic poet was capable of. For now, this is a general picture of the Romantic Age, uh, including prose and poetry. In the next video, we will focus mainly on poetry. Bye for now.